Have the wisdom to implement things. Study the history of what is going on around you. Because there are sounds and sights and symbols and now even smells which are being uh, uh, pushed at us, which are being spread through the atmosphere and entering into our minds. When the historians look at the evolution of religion, they find that from the beginning of time and somewhat after we know Adam alayhi salam and Noah alayhi salam, but after this period of time, there were people who based their religion on three major natural things. Number one, they would base their religion on the movement of planets, on the sun and the stars and the planet. So the basis of their religion was uh, what they would see in the universe. Other groups of people would base their religion on the seasons, on growth and vegetation. And so when the seasons changed, they saw the power in the season itself and they would try to deal with this power in order to gain benefit or to, or to protect themselves from evil. There were other groups of people who based their religious philosophy on reproduction. And so sexual objects, reproductive objects, were the main source of their religious icons or, or, or what they would base their understanding on. At the same time, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent prophets to every nation and every tribe. And so there were prophets sent to China, to India, to Africa, to the Americas. In these lands, there were prophets. Allah told us, وَلَقَدْ بَعَثْنَا فِي كُلِّ أُمَّةٍ رَسُولًا أَنْ اِعْبُدُ اللَّهَ وَاجْتَنِبُ الْتَغُوتِ Verily, we have sent to every nation a messenger that they would worship Allah and stay away from false deities. And so these two streams are moving along. Sometimes they are separate, sometimes they uh, come together and, and there is a confrontation, and sometimes they become intertwined and produce another religion. And so we see with this nature-based religion, in the winter season, now this season, I'll, I'll start from the winter and go around because of this season. In the winter season, as you are experiencing here now, things are getting cold. I'm living in Canada and we're normally about 10 degrees colder than you. So it's really starting to get cold. It changed and you can feel it. The plants are dying. And there are only a few plants that will remain alive. And so you have evergreen trees. You'll see all the other plants stripped of their leaves, but the evergreen tree is alive. So the people used to take the evergreen trees and put it in their houses as a type of amulet, a tamima, ta'wiz, to protect them from things, to bring them benefits. They would take the mistletoe, they would take holly, and they would put it around their homes, believing that because this is alive, there must be life inside of the tree. So that same life can reflect upon my family and maybe we won't die of the cold during this winter season. Their ceremonies happened around the winter solstice. And this is around December 21st, 22nd, 23rd, 25th. This was the time the Romans had the Saturnalia. The Greeks had the Bacchanalia. This was for their so-called god Bacchus, the god of wine, Saturn, the god of, 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 of time, the, the, the sun god. And so they based their ceremonies on this and powerful celebrations were developed. In the north, the Druid people of the north had special bonfires that they would light at this time, sacrifices that they would make uh, at this time. And so when the teachings of Isa alayhi salam came into southern Europe and the, the Romans began to torture 
his followers, and then later the followers of Paul, when the Romans tortured them, somehow somebody gave up and they said that old saying, if you can't beat them, join them. When in Rome, do like the Romans do. And so they made it uh, fair seeming. They made it uh, uh, possible for the other people, the pagan people, to accept the religion, to accept them, not kill them. And then uh, the intention was they could keep their religion and the other people could keep their religion. And so you have a winter ceremony. Isa alayhi salam, Jesus not born in the cold weather. It is agreed upon by theologians. He was not born in the winter because the people were paying their taxes. If you look at the story of Jesus that the Christians have, they're paying their taxes. That's in the warm weather. That the shepherds have their flocks outside. You can't put your flocks outside at night in Palestine now. It was the warm weather. The Quran itself speaks about Maryam. May Allah be pleased with her that Allah said when she was in the pain of her final stages of pregnancy, He said, shake the palm tree and get this Rutu Bunjaniya, that this, this ripe date, this happens in the heat of the summer. But the event was taken from its summertime and put in the winter in order to be in the solstice time, to be in the winter season time. And so they brought it together hoping to get the best of both worlds. It has nothing to do with Isa alayhi salam. And Christmas season now that we are going into, and if our children are in public schools, if they are in the society, you're seeing now everything starting to change. The Christmas season we are going into now, for people who just come overseas, it's a fitna. It's a test. They don't know what to do. I'm in this part of the world, so shouldn't I have a Christmas tree myself? One brother came to me and said, okay, I'll have a Christmas tree, not a, a evergreen, but I'll have a date palm tree. <laughs> so I'll have a halal Christmas tree. <laughs> and I'll put that one inside of my house. But I showed them that the Prophet when, when they went to the battle of Hunain, when they were on their way to Hunain, they came to a tree. And this tree was called Vata Anwat. And the people said to the Prophet ﷺ, Ij al-lana dhata anwat, kama lahum dhata anwat. Make a tree like this. The mushrikeen used to hang their weapons on the tree to get power. The Prophet ﷺ said, you are an ignorant people. And you are following the traditions of those who came before you. And he told them in another tradition, speaking about the future, you will follow them inch by inch and foot by foot. Even if they crawl into a lizard's hole, you'll crawl inside there with them. And they said, who? The, the Jews and the Christians? He said, for men, who do you think? You will crawl in the lizard's hole with them. And so Sadaqa Rasulullah alayhi salatu wasalam, it has come to pass. Part of our dawah should be to make honest, uh, uh, sincere people understand this is not a celebration of Jesus. Some of the Christians, although they didn't change their aqidah, their faith, they know it's wrong. Jehovah's Witnesses, Seventh-day Adventists, there's a number of Christians who know it is a pagan ceremony. Why is it? Every country I go to in the Christmas season, there are more people who die on the highway in accidents, die of murder, there is more abuse and rape in that time than any other time in the year. It should be the opposite if it's the birthday of Christ. It is the pagan ceremony of the God of wine, of sport and play. Well, As you go toward the spring season, and now the warm weather starts to come back, and the people who were suffering, they were suffering from uh, the, the winter season, then they said, okay, now it's turning green. Life has come back. And they began to worship a goddess who they call Austre or Austern or Easter. When you think of Easter right now, be honest with me, what's the first thing that comes in your mind if I say the word Easter to you? Rabbits, right? What else? Eggs, chickens, 
flowers. These fertility symbols. The egg is the symbol of, eat, of, of fertility, life. The, the rabbits, these the rabbits are some of the most fertile mammals in existence. That's why people would wear rabbit's foot as a, like a good luck thing. You see, so these are fertility symbols. Because, because the pagan people who are following vegetation and, and reproduction, they see this season as a time of growth and, and, and they wanted to worship the power that they thought was the power of the creator, but it was the power of created things. And then the followers of Jesus came along. The struggle went on and finally the mixed intertwined religion and so people will say Easter but they are celebrating the resurrection of the dead. Death and resurrection. In the same way the pagans used to celebrate uh, the death of the winter and then the resurrection of life in the spring season. And so it has nothing to do with Jesus. Nothing to do with the early teachings and those sincere people need to understand this. We need to give them the dawah and show them the truth about Christianity that is not really the teachings of Jesus you are, you are following now. You are in a confused form of paganism that Jesus himself would have run away from. He was following the law of Moses.